This is a review of the musculoskeletal system. First thing we're going to talk about are strains and sprains. A lot of people use these two words interchangeably. People say, oh, I sprained my ankle. Well, just because you hurt your ankle doesn't mean it's a sprain. It could be a strain. Strains are stretching of a muscle or a tendon, tendon where the sprains are um, stretching of a ligament. Now, when you hurt your ankle, are you going to know whether you hurt your tendon or a ligament? No, probably not, which is why we just typically say, I sprained my ankle. Um, because regardless of whether you strained it or sprained it, the treatment is going to be the same. We use the acronym RICE, which is for rest, ice, compress, and elevate. So you want to put um, ice on the um, on your ankle and it could be anywhere but I'm using ankle as a as an example um, you want to rest you want to put a compression like an ace bandage and you want to elevate it um, the purpose of the ice is to reduce swelling ice um, limits the blood flow so that's what limits the fluid in that area so you don't have the swelling um, a lot of people say well alternate ice and heat well, you want to do ice for the first 48 hours because the point is you want to reduce the swelling. You don't want to start adding heat until after 48 hours because ice reduces the blood flow, which will reduce the swelling, whereas heat will increase the blood flow, but that encourages healing. So the first thing you want to do is to get rid of the swelling, and then after 48 hours, you can um, start adding heat to uh, bring that blood flow to the injury to help repair it. Um, you can also use some anti-inflammatory medications, um, different things like ibuprofen or Aleve, naproxen, any of those NSAIDs. Um, also, um, Voltaren gel is an anti-inflammatory gel that can be applied topically. Um, if you're having muscle spasms, muscle relaxants can be used like um, methocarbamol, which is Robaxin, um, Soma, or Baclofen. We're going to move on to fractures. There's different types of fractures. A fracture is a break in the bone. People like to say, oh, did you break your bone or did you, you fracture it? Well, that's a silly question because it's the same thing. Uh, people tend to use the words interchangeably. So don't let anyone try to tell you a fracture or a break are two different things. They're not. Um, there's different types of fractures. You have complete, incomplete, open, closed, a pathologic fatigue or um, stress uh, fracture or compression. Here are some pictures of what they each look like. Um, you can see the, um, uh, I can't receive the picture very good, the communicated with the multiple, that is going to require surgery when you have like um, um, separate pieces of bone you're going to need surgery for that also the displaced you can see that that is um, they're not lined up that may or may not need surgery sometimes it can be um, it's called a reduction when you actually put the bones back into place that can be done without surgery but a lot of times it does require surgery there's um, spiral fracture is like a twisting injury the um, Green stick um, injury fracture, that's typically with children under the age of 10 uh, because their bones are a little bit more soft, so they tend to um, just break partially. Um, like when you try to break off a branch on a tree and if you can't break it all the way through, that's a very good example. Actually, that's how it got its name is green stick. Whereas adults, um, their bones are, are harder so that it would be a complete break. Here's an example of hip fracture. And there's different places where a hip can be fractured. This is very common with um, elderly um, falling out of bed, breaking their hip. Um, a, loss, a lot of times it is also associated with osteoporosis. The immobilization, de immobilization, oh my gosh, immobilization device. Um, this one is one that's typical for a wrist and a forearm. There's your typical fiberglass cast that we all know and love. 
traction. Um, this is an example of traction. Now, why would we do traction? Um, typically, this is done when there is a displacement of the bone. So the traction will actually hold it in place. Once you've like put that bone back in place, it'll hold it in place. Nowadays, this is used more often pre-surgery. So it, you know, if you get the bone back in place, you'll apply traction until um, you can get the patient in for surgery to have a fixation device. Biggest thing that you need to know um, as a nurse is one, make sure that the, um, the weight bag is not touching the floor. And the other thing is don't take the patient out of traction. If they need to, uh, some, for some reason, want to get out of traction, you do not do it. That is the physician only. Here's an external fixation device. Isn't that lovely? All holding the bone together externally so you get to look at it, all the screws through your skin. Um, a lot of people have an internal fixation device. The open reduction and internal fixation, ORIF. You'll hear that term a lot, ORIF, or open reduction internal. Those um, sometimes when they put those internal fixations in place, sometimes they need to go back in later and remove them. Um, sometimes they do not, unless there's a problem. My sister has one in her wrist and she's had it for years. And now all of a sudden, I guess one of the screws is starting to work loose and you can feel it under the skin. So she really needs to go in and have it removed. Some complications with a fracture, you, um, you know, it can be shock, fat embolism, that's, that's a big one. That's typically with a long bone. Like we think of an embolism, we think of uh, like a pulmonary embolism with air. Well, the same thing with air you can have with fat. When you break open a long bone, you could have a fat embolism. So you would definitely, if you have somebody with a long bone fracture, suddenly they're um, having problems breathing, that would definitely be a consideration and that would be an emergency. Obviously infection, um, neurovascular dysfunction, pain, pain, uh, that's, you know, definitely um, impaired mobility, inadequate nutrition. Now with healing of a bone, you want to make sure that the, um, the patient is getting adequate protein. Um, they need um, usually iron. Um, they are going to need obviously calcium and vitamin D. Those two go together hand in hand. They want to avoid or minimize alcohol. Um, they don't have to completely avoid alcohol, but it does um, excessive alcohol will delay the healing and cigarette smoke. Um, smoking is definitely interferes with he healing, so they need to avoid smoking. All right, we're going to talk about osteoporosis. Um, osteoporosis is basically a, do a bone demineralization with loss of calcium and phosphorus salts leading to fragile bones. It basically makes the bone very spongy. It looks like a sponge because it's not all tight and dense anymore. It makes it very fragile, easy to break. This um, is um, Typically, you have the osteoblasts, which are the, the, the cells that they create bone. They're the bone building cells. Then you have osteoclasts, which are basically the bone eating because you're going to build up new bone and then you're going to, old bone's going to basically be reabsorbed. So you've got the osteoblast and osteoclast. As we're younger, the osteoblast works faster than the osteoclast. So we're building bone faster than we're destroying it. Well, osteoporosis, that's the problem, is now the bone building is slower than the bone eating portion, to put it in simplistic terms. So now they're losing more bone than they are building, and that's why it suddenly has that spongy appearance and it becomes very fragile. People usually don't know it until they, until they actually have a fracture. This is um, typically what the spine looks like. Starts off at 40 and then how um, the spine changes at 60 and 70. This is called the dowager's hump. This is basically because of the bone um, becoming less dense. Risk factors, cigarette smoking, early menopause, excessive alcohol, if there's a family history, female, women tend to get it more. That's because of estrogen. 
um, increasing age, sedentary lifestyle, a thin, small frame, and typically white of European descent or Asians are more susceptible. Now you have an older woman that's post-menopause, smokes, drinks, doesn't exercise, and she's very, um, very small, very petite. She's a high, high, high risk of getting osteoporosis. So definitely, um, you would want to people uh, want to encourage people to quit smoking. Um, they the I think the next screen actually says what they can do. Let me see. Yeah, here it is. So you want to encourage exercise, especially weight bearing. Weight bearing exercise it puts that that stress on the bone and it causes the bone to content, um, constantly rebuild. So it actually enhances bone growth. Um, so weight bearing exercise is, is huge. That is what's recommended um, to people that are, um, well, for anybody, but definitely people that are at risk for osteoporosis. Um, encourage a diet high in protein, calcium, vitamin C and D, and iron. Um, when people have osteoporosis, they also can be put on medications, um, bio, bi, I always say it wrong, bisphosphonates. I always want to say biophosphonates, bisphosphonates, like Fosamax uh, or Bonova, Boniva. Um, typically, these are taken once a week. Um, you can give larger doses that could be monthly. Most people I know take them once a week. Um, when they take the medications, um, usually they take it in the morning. Um, it's at least um, 30 minutes before they can eat, like eat breakfast. Usually we tell them to get up early and, and take it first thing in the morning and then wait 30 minutes before they eat breakfast. They do need to take it with a full glass of water and they have to sit upright for 30 minutes. You don't want this to get stuck in their esophagus. You want to make sure that it goes all the way down into their stomach. So they must sit upright. Here's a picture of osteoporosis. You can see the top one um, is a vertebrae, and then um, you can see the osteoporotic uh, bone on the right-hand side. So you can definitely look how, how that's just not even, it, it's very, very spongy, not even spongy, that's just very, very um, fragile looking. All right, and gout. Um, gout is a type of arthritis. It's actually card called gouty arthritis. It's basically urate crystals. They get um, in the joints, and they can get in other body tissues too, but you typically see it in people's like big toe or an ankle. Um, you'll hear about people talking about their gouty toe. Um, it's basically people that have um, abnormally um, increased amounts of uric acid in their body. They'll have swelling and inflammation in the joints. It's excruciatingly painful. Um, these little um, these hard, irregular shaped nodules are called tophi. People, when they have a gout flare up, they'll have a low grade fever. They're very malaise and the headache. Um, and like I said, it is excruciatingly painful. They um, have difficulty walking, mobilizing, some things that they need to do is um, have a diet, a low purine diet. That means wines, aged cheese, organ meats should all be avoided. They need to have a high fluid intake of 2000 milliliters a day. That's just flush those purines out of their system. Um, weight reduction. If they're obese, they need to lose weight. They need to avoid alcohol. They should elevate the extremity when they are experiencing an attack and protect the joint from excessive movement or direct contact with sheets or blankets. Um, and then also take medications. Now, when it, you talk about, you have a patient with um, like a gouty toe, that's where you see it most often is in the big toe. Um, you've got, you probably don't even wanna put even a sheet over their foot because just even that, having a sheet on them is gonna cause them um, extreme pain. Some things that they would, could take, um, some analgesics like um, acetaminophen or an anti-inflammatory. Um, also, um, there are urocosuric agents, which basically lower the uric acid levels by inhibiting the reabsorption of uric acid. That causes um, 
them to basically excrete the uric acid out of their body. Allopurinol is one that uh, we see quite often. So that's it for musculoskeletal. Any questions, reach out to me, please.